Good morning everybody, Terry here, and today's project we're going to be working on engine codes P0491 and P0492. These are very common trip codes that you're going to get on your BMW Z3. We're going to go over how to help diagnose as well as possible fix that might be for your car. things first I'm gonna go over the history of what of what got me to where I am now as well as why I kind of put this off because it's been frustrating for me just because uh, I trusted the mechanic and they led me astray which led me to become a do-it-yourselfer and ever since this is when I started you know just kind of learning how to fix my own cars so I've had the Z3 for a little over a year and when I got the car it had the engine code on it uh, for having issues with like the vacuums and stuff. So I went ahead, I took it to an established, uh, well-respected mechanic in my area who only works on European cars. Uh, so I took it in there, he went ahead and he said that he replaced all of the vacuum lines and hoses uh, because that was causing my issues. And that's where he went. And then as soon, not even a week went by after I went to this mechanic, and the engine codes came back. At the time, I was in the process of moving to another uh, town, so I just didn't have the time to go back to that set, the same mechanic to try to have them fix whatever they didn't fix, or to see if maybe there was something else, under an under, underlying issue that was missed because of the bad vacuum lines that I had. Skip ahead, I start diagnosing myself to try to figure out what could be the problem. I had already at this point ruled out the vacuum lines because the mechanic fixed those, right? So I'm like, okay, well, what's the next possible things that could be causing the same uh, engine codes to be coming up? Let's go over it. All right, so on the Z3, when you get these error codes, there's a process that you will go through to try to diagnose the issue. Most commonly, it's going to be the vacuum line that connects here, and it wraps all the way around the side of the engine and then goes to the back of the manifold. That's what I ruled out because the mechanic supposedly fixed it. So I went to the next stage, and I tested the uh, secondary air pump right here and what you want to do for that is on a morning before you when you haven't used your car you want to cold start it uh, you want to unhook the hose right here for other models of BMW you might find this right up in this area right over here but on my Z3 it's going to be in this back corner you just got to unhook this hose right here start up the car come around this should start sounding like a vacuum cleaner and pumping immense amounts of air out and you'll be able to feel it if it's coming out. And it should do that for about 30 seconds or so and then it'll shut off. Now you can only do that test on a cold start so it's best to do it first thing in the morning when you haven't done anything with the car yet so that way the pump will engage. So I did that, the pump worked beautifully so I ruled that out. So the next thing I did is I came over here and this here is your secondary air pump check valve. So I went ahead and I took this off and the original one was really dirty, had a bunch of carbon inside. So I was like, okay, this has to be the issue. It didn't look like it was in the best condition. So I went ahead and I swapped it out. The air pump will shoot the air through the hoses and then it'll come into the check valve here and this is what's going to hold the vacuum and then it'll feed through the the smaller line that'll work its way back to the back of the uh, manifold there and there's two different like sensors back there uh, the vacuum control valve and then there's an there's another one uh, back there as well and it, we'll, we'll get into it I went ahead swapped that out and the car actually started running a lot smoother so I thought I had addressed the issue I uh, drove the car for about maybe about a week before the engine light came back on with the same codes and now, it's now I'm really starting to scratch my head like what could it be I got new vacuum lines my pump works I replaced the valve here what else could it be the next stage 
but it's not those things are not your issue would be at the back of the manifold the vacuum control valve uh, that little that unit could have gone out so that's another possible thing so I decided okay that's got to be my issue so I went to start doing some more inspections and that's when I found out the, the truth now you're not gonna be able to see it because I have all this stuff still uh, attached on the car but I'm gonna post a picture and it's gonna show you behind the manifold here the vacuum line that was replaced uh, wasn't replaced <laughs> uh, it's completely severed in the back uh, so literally where it attaches to the control valve it's not attached to the control valve it, it snapped it snapped so I, I'm going to re have to replace that vacuum line so I went ahead and I got a meters worth of vacuum line and only a meter because I only need to replace that section there's like a another connecting area right around in here that I can connect it to so I don't have to do the entire thing the vacuum line is in separate parts so you got the part that connects here and it goes so far and then it'll hit like some hard plastic that'll be like this part two and then it comes around and then there's another spot and then it'll come around and back here again so it's like four different four different sections of your line you can do all one line if you want to so what I've seen a lot of people do is they'll go and they'll get uh, f like fuel hose and they'll use fuel hose to replace that because that stuff is thicker and it's got a you know it's got more resilience to heat than this flimsy thin rubber stuff does here so I went online I got the vacuum hose as well as the control valve uh, I ordered them online from Auto House Arizona uh, I'll show you their name here's the here's my receipt and they had a lot of uh, different parts and things that would be useful for the BMW that appealed to me because their prices were really nice. That I went ahead and I ordered the vacuum control valve as well as the vacuum hose. And there's the part numbers there. Uh, I believe the diam the inside diameter is like I think two millimeter or something like that. So uh, that's what I needed to get. This here is the vacuum control valve that I'm also going to swap out. Yes, my issue is clearly the vacuum line in the back is busted. So that's, you know, more than likely my issue of why I'm tripping these codes. But I figured since I'm already going to be messing around at the back of the engine, I might as well just replace this too because this is another common issue when it comes to these codes. If it turns out that everything else that I've listed checks out fine on your car and you can even get like your vacuum uh, testing kits to... Uh, test your vacuum on stuff too so that way you don't have to fully replace that uh, second the, the secondary air pump control valve you'll be able to you know hook up your vacuum testing stuff on that and then and go through that but if everything else checks out this here is the next possible thing that could be wrong with your car so I went ahead and I ordered one of these now this goes right in the back of your manifold there are two different connecting pieces right here that you're going to have your vacuum line attached to uh, the one that is broken on mine and then the one that's good so I'll have to reattach the one that's good and then put a whole new line on it and I'm going to try to get those lines attached before I get this back in there because it's going to be very very tight spacing to get this in there it's going to be deeper in the back sideways and there's not going to be a lot of move to maneuver it there's also a connector on the back that your electrical goes into so make sure before you start pulling on this, make sure you detach the electrical first because the last thing you want to do is damage any of the wiring uh, while you're trying to get this off. So please, please, please take off the electrical stuff first. All right, and then start pulling on it. To get to the vacuum line in the back as well as replacing the control valve, there may be some things that you might need to remove. The only thing that you should have to remove is this wire the this wire harness little uh, apparatus here you there's just two like 10 mil millimeter uh, bolts that are holding this in place that so that we all of your hoses and your electrical lines and stuff can feed through there and stay off the engine uh, some of you might have a cabin filter housing 
uh, right in here that you might have to pull the, like the filter and stuff out to get more access to the back. It's really going to depend on the car that you have. Um, some of you might need to take the engine cover off so that way you can have a little bit more working room back there. Uh, when I was doing some of my preliminary inspections, I did notice some things that were kind of red flag. I'm going to show you these things and then if any of you know if these are actual issues, please leave a comment. Right back in here, there's this piece right here and it looks like, see how this hose this is like, it's pinched and it's making a, a hard, almost like a hard, you know, like 90 degree turn right there. This looks problematic to me. I feel like no line should ever have, a, you know, be pinched off like that. So please let me know if this is something that I might need to address. And then another thing I noticed, again, I don't think you're going to be able to see it currently, but right in this back corner here, on the passenger side here behind the uh, the manifold here, I've noticed that there were a bunch of like hoses coming directly underneath the engine cover and it looked like the engine cover was actually pinching them off. Uh, so I want to actually take my engine cover off just so I can kind of get a better look to see if maybe he, the previous mechanic pinched off some stuff when he reattached my engine cover. Now for me, I do, as you can see, I have this strut brace on here, so I can't take my engine cover off without removing the, this brace. I want to get under here and see um, if there's a lot of debris under there that I would need to clean out. Just to give me peace of mind, I'm going to check that, and like I said, I'm not getting any specific codes for that control valve, uh, so my valve should be good but since i'm already going to be back here messing around just for peace of mind since this is something that is known to fail i'm just going to put a new one in because i don't want to have to worry about digging around back here again in, in anytime soon so i'm just going to do it now peace of mind so that way if i do run into any other issues i can at least rule it out and then the last thing um while you're Troubleshooting all your issues for the, these engine uh, codes. Once again, the P0491 and the P0492. Absolute worst case scenario is your engine has uh, a lot of carbon buildup in it and you might need to go and get your uh, valves cleaned. I, I make sure to only use 93 octane gasoline uh, in this car. Uh, I make sure I get it from Shell so that I know it has all of the uh, additives and things in there that, to really keep this car clean uh, in the inside. But that doesn't help if it's already got a lot of neglect on it from the previous owner. Now, enough of my rambling. Let's start working on it. So first things first, go ahead and get yourself a psychic wrench with a 10 millimeter uh, I also recommend having the extension on here because it does sit pretty deep behind here. So you're going to want to make sure you get some reach and uh, you might need to lift up a little bit to actually get onto the bolts. Make sure that the, uh, actually it's a nut. So it's a 10 millimeter nut on there. You're not removing the entire bolt. So just make sure that when you're loosening this, you don't drop this back behind the manifold. And put it someplace safe where you will not lose it. <laughs> Do not lose it! And now, and safely, 
kind of slide that out of my way. I just need room. So right now I can easily pull this back enough to where I can get my hand back here. It's still a little tight because of the engine cover. So I am going to remove this brace and get the engine cover off and uh, Maybe that'll give me maybe another inch. <laughs> so we'll see what happens. So I have two on each side. I got one out. Working on my second. Oh, that one was definitely the tightest one out of the ones I've done so far. move my brakes. I can finally clean underneath it. <laughs> so the next stage is I'm going to attempt to remove the engine cover. There are some little caps here that will pop out that should expose some bolts. So we will do that first. Just get like a little screwdriver and then uh, these will pop right out. And then just be very careful that you don't lose them. as well and they are those are not that tight at all just a 10 millimeter bolt with a uh, washer on there that's all we got in there So this is, this, if you've never opened up your engine before, if you're, if you're brand new to the car, this is what it'll look like underneath the middle for all your, all of your assemblies and stuff for your fuel system. Got your fuel rail here, which will have your injectors on attached that go inside. So next, we got to get this one off because I do want to see that back corner because I feel like they got a bunch of... Uh, hoses or something pinched off back there. So let's take a look. Oh, that was tighter. Alright. And then this is what we're working with. Right here, so it's just one. Of the, I don't know the proper name for these, but it's the uh, the nut that has the washer built in. Mine 
and it don't seem to be magnetized, so I'm trying to get these out by hand. It would be nice if I had a nice magnetized socket set. Definitely something I need to get. Alright, got it. <laughs> you have to remove the fuel cap so that way you can lift this section off. I'm going to put the cap back on because I am working where I am somewhat exposed to the outdoors so I don't want any kind of dirt, leaves or anything falling in there. So now you can see everything is actually pretty clean in here. Very nice. I was expecting it to be all sorts of filth. Now this is actually really good. I mean this needs a little bit of dusting but the engine is very clean. This is good. This is very good news. That means no one spilled oil or anything you know doing maintenance so that's good um, I will need to check all my plugs you know and see how those are but that'll be a project for another day I'm not focused on that right now since my engine is running a little rich outside of doing the oil change uh, I should also check my plugs too let's just get back to what we're looking at over here let's see if I can see back here now so right back in here there's this hose, or like this line, right here. I don't know if you can see it. I need, I need a flashlight. There's a line right here, and it's going directly underneath there. So I'm, I'm guessing that must be part of the design. I thought maybe it was getting pinched off by the cover, but it's not getting pinched off by the cover. It's going down in there. All right, so I went ahead and I got some lighting. So now you can more clearly see there's definitely like a hose that goes there and see how it looks like it's been pinched right here there's definitely an indent there I can't tell if it's cracked but it's definitely it got pinched there at some point and then see if we can get a better look of what needs to be repaired all right, so this is a very difficult angle tight space here that I'm working in, but if you look right here, this is my issue right here. This is where it snapped. So I gotta get this part of my vacuum line replaced. It's deep underneath here. So right there's the black and white piece that goes into it, loops in. And yeah, I gotta get way under here and it's just, it's tight. It's very tight. This is what the uh, broken vacuum line uh, looked like. I had to break it in little pieces to try to peel it off uh, the rest of the way. But uh, here you go, the remnants of the old vacuum line. So right there, you can see I got the new vacuum line attached. So I got it connected to the hard plastic part that it connects to, as well as it's connected to the control valve. So I got that part at least fixed. So I will still see this as a victory. I got the main thing that was broken is no longer broken. More maintenance needs to be done, but at least that has been corrected so let me go ahead and get the electrical piece reattached to the valve and then we will go ahead and get the engine cover back on get the electrical rail here reattached and uh, we're gonna call this a day all right so let me go ahead and get this electrical piece back on Which Super easy to get it on. It was definitely a pain to get it off, let me tell you. All right, so that's all fully connected. Let me get the uh, cover back on.
seems to be tight and just slipping right now and I don't want to strip it. These weren't very tight, so I'm just getting them nice and snug and then I'm letting it be. And yeah, those were not tight. And then put the little clips back in. Alright, that's all back on. And those don't need to be over tightened either. I'm not going to tighten that. I want to make sure it all lines up before I do. Tight. Give them a good crank. And one more. All right. 
And there we have it. It's all fully uh, reassembled. So that's good to go. Always make sure you remove any ex any tools or anything. Pull every make sure everything is out. We got a screwdriver up here. My control valve that I wasn't able to replace, but hopefully I can get it. So if that so it's right down back underneath there. It sits in just like this. I was able to pull the electrical off just fine. This part here, this top piece is where the new hose is that I just put on. The one that goes here, it loops around and goes to the other valve. That needs to be replaced. And then the other end of the valve, that one uh, as well needs to be replaced. But that one, from what I could see of it, it did look like it was larger in size. So the extra line I have, I don't think is gonna work. So I wanna double check before I break that off. But yeah, this here piece here, I just could not get my fingers back here to try to pry this down so I could slide it out. It just was too tight. I kept hitting the other hose and the other uh, valve that was back there. So I, I would rather disassemble those, get this out, and then assemble the new one onto this and then plug it back in. That would be the most ideal. So that's going to be a separate project. Thankfully, like I said, I was not tripping codes for this specifically, so hopefully the one that's on there is still good, and all it needed was that new piece of line replaced. So I'm hopeful. Uh, but yeah, I will, I will still try to get the other, the other lines, uh, the other two lines uh, replaced as well. But at least we got that part done. All right, my friends, thank you so much for sticking around and watching me go through this. It wasn't a 100% success, but at least the, the number one thing that needed to be uh, replaced was replaced. Uh, so that's great stuff. Uh, I need to go now and get myself cleaned up. I got grease everywhere, uh, which is something I like to see because you see a lot of mechanic YouTubers and they somehow manage to never get dirty. <laughs> uh, so thank you guys so much. Make sure you guys check out my other content that I'm gonna be making. Uh, hit that like button, subscribe, and make sure you go ahead and follow me on Instagram at CoolCatTerry. Take care.